Contribution. By the end of this video, you should be able to define the term contribution and be able to calculate contribution per unit and total contribution. OK, let's start by looking at what is meant by the term contribution. Contribution is a difference between sales and the variable cost. Now, in more detail, contribution actually focuses on how much profit is made on the product or service it's sold. And the reason it's called contribution is because the profit that you make here will then contribute to covering those fixed costs. On the break-even formula, the contribution part is the selling price minus a variable cost. That's why sometimes when you see the break-even formula, you'll see it fixed cost divided by contribution. Now, you may be asked to calculate the contribution per unit. The contribution per unit is that lower part of the break-even formula I just mentioned, the selling price per unit minus a variable cost per unit. And that tells you how much profit you're making on each unit, which then will go towards paying for those fixed costs that you've got. However, you may also be asked to calculate total contribution. Total contribution is total sales or total revenue minus total variable costs. Now, again, it's really important that you focus on those two key terms, contribution per unit and total contribution. The language that's used in the exam could potentially catch you out. Now, total contribution can also be calculated by doing the contribution per unit multiplied by the number of units you actually sell. So that's a combination of both formulas that I've just shown you. Effectively, working out the contribution for each unit then multiplying by the number of units that have actually been sold. Let's take a look at an example to see how it works. Now, with this example, firstly, you may want to try and answer the questions, because I will take you through how it's being calculated, or you may choose to just watch it and see how we calculate before having an attempt at another question. B has produced the following information, and you can see the details in that table below. See if you can calculate the contribution per unit for B, and also see if you can calculate the total contribution for B. Pause the video now while you do that, and then unpause to see the answer. OK, let's start with the contribution per unit. So as you can see, I've taken the sales revenue of 500,000, and I've divided it by the 10,000 units that are being produced to produce that sales revenue of 500,000. And that tells me that the selling price of every single unit is 50 pound. Then I need to also find my variable cost per unit. So what I've done is took my total variable cost, as you can see there, of 200,000. And again, I know that I've had to sell 10,000 units to make that profit. So I've done 200,000 divided by 10,000, which gives me 20 pound cost per unit. Then using my formula, and it's really important you write out the formula in any examination questions, I've done selling price per unit of £50 minus my variable cost per unit of £20, which gives me a contribution per unit of £30. So if you've got 30 well done. Now the part for total contribution can be calculated in two ways as we know already. Total sales revenue obviously minus total variable costs, or we could do contribution per unit times the quantity sold. So let's do the first way, the simple way here. 500,000 is my total sales revenue, minus my 200,000, which is my total variable costs, and that gives me 300,000. Just to check this is correct, let's do it the other way. We know already that the contribution per unit is 30 pound, and we know we sell 10,000 units, so 30 times 10,000 gives me 300,000. And there you go. I've calculated my total contribution. Now you could be asked, how could the organization increase its contribution? Effectively, how could it increase the profit it makes on each item it sells? Well, it could increase the selling price, quite simply. However, you've got to think about a knock-on effect of that. Is that feasible? And is that possible? Or it could look to lower the variable cost per unit. Again, you've got to then also consider what will the knock-on effect be of lowering your variable costs. But that is the way that you would tackle any question which talks about increasing contribution. 
Okay, the best way to test your understanding is to have a go at some questions. So I've produced one question to test your knowledge on this topic of contribution. As you can see below, you've got a table with some data. And once again, you need to calculate the contribution per unit for B and the total contribution for B. Pause the video now while you undertake that and then unpause it to see the answers you should have got. Okay, as you can see here, I've calculated the variable cost per unit and the selling price per unit first. So all I've done there is taken my sales revenue of 800,000 and divided it by the 35,000 units that B produces, which gives me an average selling price of £22.86 with some rounding involved there. So effectively, that's how I've calculated that figure there. You also will find that the variable cost per unit is 350,000 divided by 35,000, which gives you £10 variable cost per unit. If you then do your selling price per unit of £22.86 minus your £10 for your variable cost, you actually get £12.86 contribution per unit. Again, based on rounding, you may have a few inaccuracies based on that. Of course, we can then calculate our total contribution. So, using the formula, the most simple formula, sales revenue is 800,000, take away our total variable cost of 350,000, and that gives us 450,000. Now, you will notice that down below where the answers should match, and they don't, and you might be thinking, why? And why have I included that? Well, mainly to show you how rounding and accuracies can cause a problem. So, in this case here, you'd have to, realistically, the exam board would have to allow both answers. So, as you can see there, I've taken my £12.86, and I've multiplied it by my 35,000 units, and I get 450,100. So, you can see then numbers should realistically balance, but that's the difference that rounding has when it causes inaccuracy. Of course, in the exam, they'd always pick nice numbers, so that would never happen. But you can see in real life how that does vary. Thanks for checking out the Bee Business B YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the subscribe button down below to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at B Business B. Also, give the Facebook page a like. It's facebook.com forward slash B Business B. And lastly, don't forget to check out the online hiver activities found on bbusinessb.co.uk full of quizzes, activities and resources. And remember, until next time, keep buzzing.